All right, well, welcome to the Show Enough Pants tutorial. I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth today than what I did in the um, other video I've done of all three pieces. Just to clarify some more questions you may have on these pants as to I do end up, you know, a, a practically altering this pattern um, because if you see here, I am using, this is a very old pattern. I've had it since I was like 16 years old when this style was well in style. But um, it's McCall's 2360. As you can see here. Yep, that's what we wore back in the day. Uh, let's see, what else? So it's unisex, loose fitting, wide leg pants. Now this, if you'll notice this, these, this pattern, ugh, sorry I'm all stuttering, does have parts for pockets, but we're gonna bypass most of this, okay? Now one thing to keep in mind when we are doing pants is not to just completely rely on the pattern that it will fit you. Many times you'll look at the sizing on the, the back, you know, that, that tells you what, what the waist, what the hip is, and not everyone fits these proportions. Um, so I'm gonna use an example of one that I'm working on. The out seam, which is this outer part, this is your inseam, like this is where the crotch is, and this is your inseam. So this right here is your out seam, and this is gonna be 35 for the person that I'm making. Also, I'm going to do either a drawstring or elastic band waist. Don't know yet until I get there, but those are two options that you can do. So what I'm gonna do to the top here is I've already added an inch and a half and I measured this out. So that way when I go to fold, this is gonna be the fold line and this will be the part that folds down and it'll encase either my elastic band or the drawstring. It's, it's the same concept for both. Also, crotch, crotch issue. There's something that most people don't realize until yeah, you try it on and it doesn't fit. It's when the crotch is too short. Because sometimes you have such a big butt. Let's, we'll be, we'll be very real here. You have a big butt, the crotch is too short and it won't go up past your, the rump part, which should, your, the, the waistband of your pants should be up at least to the dimples on your back. You know, that torso part, the t dimples on your torso. But sometimes these, these, um, you know, these patterns, like I said, they aren't made for everyone. They're made for a specific fit, body type proportions. And again, not everyone is like that. So when you do make any type of pants, you're gonna take your crotch measurement, which in this case, this person's is 28. So on one part of the pattern, so right now I'm working on the back first, you're going to measure this part and whatever however much shorter it is than that measurement. So of course 28 is not gonna be this whole 28. This is just the back part of the pants. So you're gonna have to cut that number in half. So that's 14. So this should equal 14 or maybe even a couple inches longer. It doesn't have, if you want it precise, it can be precise. But you know, in this case, since show enough's pants are just so wide, so baggy, so loose fitting, even if it's bigger, that's perfectly fine. What we don't want is something too short because then you have to pull your pants all the way up and then you'll start getting like camel toe or moose knuckles or whatever because the crotch line is just like, you know, cradling your crotch area. So that's why we want to have it just maybe a little bit longer just so that there were, there's some space so that type of thing doesn't happen. So in this case, this is just slight, this is like exactly 14 inches. And then again, I still added my one and a half up here just because that part's going to fold on like I had mentioned for your drawstring or elastic band. Also, when we cut the, the pattern, we're going to add a five eighths seam allowance or half inch seam allowance, whichever you feel more comfortable with. And I've already shortened this length so that way it is around the 35 inch mark. Right now I have it at like 36, but that's fine because that I'll just not, I just won't add a seam allowance at the end here. And once I fold it up, it'll be 
uh, about 35, 35 and a quarter inch length. So that's good. Again, on the show enough pants, doesn't have to be exact down to the millimeter or centimeter because just it's so wide and baggy and you want that because that's how the pants look in the movie. Also, another thing, when we cut pants, um, you want, see how this line is, is going with your pattern? This line has to be parallel with your selvage, which is this weird part of the fabric that you notice in every cut of fabric. It has like this weird part here on the end. So you're gonna cut in line, so that way that line is parallel with your selvage, okay? So for the back, we're going to cut two. So mark off all your seam allowance, get your length right, make sure all the measurements are correct. Also, you wanna check your waistband measurements. Again, with show enough, it can be a couple inches larger than your waist because when you have the drawstring or the elastic waist, it's gonna cinch it back down to your size. So again, that's okay. Make sure, so if you, let's say your waist is 35 inches, there's, you're gonna cut four of these, right? In the end, you'll have four pieces because you'll have two of the back, two of the front. Cut that number in four and make sure it's at least that length or a couple inches larger for this type of pattern so that way it fits you properly. Same for the waist, I mean, I'm sorry, same for the hips. Make sure that number divided by four on one part of the pattern is equal to that or a couple inches larger and that's okay. But other than that, I'm ready to cut the back piece. The front will be um, a little more alterations. I'll show you that one so I won't skip it. So please stay tuned and let me go ahead and get cutting on this one. At this point in time, we're gonna be doing the front part. I already have my two back pieces cut out. And here I do wanna make note on the, uh, the alterations of this pattern that I told you that I would be doing. So if you see here in, in the pattern that you're looking at the picture, this right here is where you, you put your pocket, where you put your hand in. But of course, we don't need that in these show enough pants, so I'm going to be bypassing those. So I took my ruler and I made a line. I lined it up with this part of the pants and I made a line as you can see here. Same thing here. So we're gonna just bypass this whole thing and then I still added my one and a half inch extra there for my little uh, tunnel for the casing or the drawstring. Also here I want to make note because there this is not going to have a front zipper so that that extra flap panel part that's added is uh, I folded it down as you can see. Um, I, I just folded it so this way this is a continuous line. Otherwise, you would have had like this thing here and that's what you use when you do like the jean zippers. But we're not doing that. So again, just tuck that in, double check your crotch length, um, you know, whatever your crotch length is. And I will leave a video, a really good video link that I found a while back that helps, that it's just a great help if you have no idea how to take your crotch measurement. It's an excellent guide and that's how you're gonna get your number in order to check your crotch length and then make sure that the pattern is going to fit you as well. Check my length. Those are the only two alterations here. Again, you're gonna cut two front pieces. Again, keep it in line with the selvage, which is like hanging off on that side of the table. So we're gonna cut two, and then after we cut, we have our four pieces, then um, we're going to do the little red triangle things that go on the top front of Shonuff's pants, which is just like, you know, a real thin triangle. Uh, we'll go over it right now, but have your red fabric ready. Also, just to make note, I did choose cotton just because it's more inexpensive. Um, of course, if you want to do this in denim, knock yourself out. But you know, we're not trying to keep this, I try and keep my costs low for my clients as well as yourself. If you want to just make this a simple Halloween costume, I just got like the symphony broadcloth type fabric at Joann's. That's where I buy all my, the majority of my fabric from. So let's go ahead and cut these two out and then we'll go further with the little red triangle things. Okay, so now we are at this point. So basically when, oh, oh sorry, let me move my thumb there. So basically with these little red triangles, there's no particular pattern 
to start off with, you just take a um, rectangular piece of red fabric and you kind of just eyeball a triangle out of it. Have it fit because you're going to need two. Um, a more accurate show enough costume, he does have two red stripes in the front, um, which I'm going to do. I don't think I had that in the original video. Uh, I had one stripe. So let's get it more down accurate. Let's get two in there. So kind of eyeball it, you know, if you, if you need to make it skinnier, you just fold it in half and trim along the side at a di diagonal until you get your first piece of the triangle. Once you have it perfectly and you kind of place it on here and it, it fits and it looks like you can fit another one on there, then just take your first piece, that'll be your pattern, and cut um, three more out of your red fabric and that'll be the red stripes for this. I did on the black fabric to get my center point at the top and the bottom, but mainly it's more for the top um, just to evenly space out your two red triangles. So I have my center point here and each triangle is two inches apart. So they are four inches apart equally. So that way you can have it even on both front legs of the pants. So everything's even. So now that I have everything placed, I am ready to fold, fold these down and sew them. And get my, my pins here. So you're just gonna like fold, do a little skinny fold like about that. That's like mm, less than half an inch. You know, not, you know, it doesn't have to be like a real fat fold. Just kind of fold it, pin it, and do this all the way for both of them, and then sew them down. Do that for both front legs. And then, once you're done with that, give it a quick press, just to press down the folds that you made, make it nice and crisp. And then you're gonna take both front pieces, right side together, right side, so both red triangles will be inside when you sandwich these together. And you're gonna sew just the crotches together. Same thing with the, the back part of the pants. You put them together, line them up, and just sew the butt crack of it. And then once you have those two pieces, then you know I'll continue with the tutorial. But it's really simple, Every time, anytime you make pants or shorts, you put right sides together, right side to right side, and you always start with the crotch or the butt crack. Of course, if you're doing zippers, there is a point that you stop in the, at the front part, but you know, I don't wanna confuse you, but that's, that's pretty much how we're gonna go about it. So just do okay, that. So now um, I've surged. You don't have a serger, you could use uh, just a zigzag stitch on this crotch line, but I sewed that one. Now you can see this one is sewn too. So now I'm gonna open both up and I'm going to, you know, put them right sides together. Right sides to right sides together. And then sew them on the outside first. And then, um, and then when, once I've done that, then you line up the crotches and then you sew your, your U to, for the leg which I'll show pictures of as I do. So now we're onto the waistband. Um, so when you cut your, your waistband, you always wanna cut it, mm, in, in, in my opinion, it would be the most comfortable. So let's say your waist or the hip measurement, wherever you wear your pants at, is 40. So I would cut an elastic, uh, elastic, you know, piece of elastic that's maybe 33 inches long. So seven, so five to seven inches shorter than what the actual measurement is with. So that way it's nice and snug on your body, but it's not too tight to where you're incredibly uncomfortable, but it's also not loose enough. So that way, if you're like jumping around or something, your pants don't fall down. So that's what we're going to do. So I have mine cut out and how you start it off is you'll put it to the, oops, sorry. You'll put it to the way top of the waistband and then with either a serger or a zigzag stitch, catch the edge with the elastic. And you're gonna do that all the way around. Make sure that when you do it, you do section, section it off by pinning it to make sure that um, it's even. Cause sometimes if you don't pin it off in the even spaces, and I'll show you right now what I mean by that when I'm sewing it. 
is just because you might sew it and not stretch this and then when you start getting towards the end there's all this slack and then you got to pull your elastic a lot and sew it so when you when it's done it's uneven like this side will be all scrunched when it's unworn and then the rest of it will be loose so you got to kind of like I said pull and pin it in place so that way when you do go and pull to sew it all the scrunch is even around your pants so let me show you how to do that and then I'll show you how you finish off the casing because you know another thing you can do if you're a beginner at this is just fold this down to whatever width your elastic is and then sew it and then make you made like a tunnel and then feed this through with this uh, a safety pin but the problem with that is that a lot of times when you make pants like that or something that has a casing like that over time it starts to twist and flip around inside and you feel it and it's it's just super annoying so it's best to try and do this the correct way the first time to avoid that problem so let me just show you all right just a little close-up of what I meant earlier about evenly putting the elastic band so just start with one side like start with the back seam like I did here and then pin it down and then pull your elastic in half and get that half point and bring it to the front center seam which is right here and pin it and then same thing and then pull it you know the opposite side now and pin that to the side seam and see how I was saying there's lots of slack so you have to kind of stretch this to meet the cloth as you're sewing but if you pin it like this and you stretch it as you're sewing then it's going to be even so as I'm sewing you know this I'll have to stretch it for the the cloth hopefully that's understandable here um, so yeah so you see I started sewing it and I'm pulling this as I'm, I'm sewing it. See how there's all this slack right here in this section? So technically you have like four sections that I was explaining when, I, when you're pinning it and making everything even. So you pull the elastic as you sew. And then again, see how the slack is? I've been, I've been pulling it as I'm sewing it. So right here, see how it's, the slack's gone and it all meets? So that's pretty much what you have to do, like pull it to where it fits the pant part of your waistband. And then that way when you let go, that scrunch is even. I hope that's, that's, that's the best explanation I can do. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed, so I have to just do this, put the camera down and do it, and then show you right now when it's done. So you can see it's evenly scrunched around all the, all the top of the pants. So now what I'm gonna do, it's like I said, I'm gonna fold it down and stretch it as I sew and that'll case it in and now it'll look a lot better. I had to switch sewing machines because I think my other one is finally in need of servicing. It's just, yeah, it's not working very well anymore. But thankfully I have this as a backup and I can continue. So let's go ahead and get with this. So I'm just going to fold this down and stretch it as I go. 